We'll get them back down here. We'll get them back down here. We'll get them back in. Let's go to this table. Maybe that's... Yeah, yeah, two more tables. Go down this. That's all right. You, got, you work at both sides of that table and then come yes, out. Yes, sir. Which one? Where did we start? Start the first human you should get to. Let's start with this young man. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Which? I'm Bud Neal. I went to work when I was 14 years old, Dolphin Pusser, but I made more than that than people. I made a nickel out of <laughs> 11 hours a day. <laughs> I had more than you'd worth. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> This is the oldest man in the crowd. I'm the oldest man in the house. I went to work in the cotton mill in Tallapoosa, Georgia, in 1909, and I was 14 years old. I went to sweep in the big alley first, and then from that, I didn't get, I, I worked, I went to work at 6 o'clock in the morning and took 30 minutes for dinner and got off at 6.30 that night. And I, after I swept Big Alley a while, then I went to Dolphin Spinners. <laughs> so I, I wound up, I wound up Dolphin Spinners. What's your name, sir? What? Name? What's your name? Lee Zimmerman. Leander Zimmerman. Leander Zimmerman. Well, I went to work at East Mill in 1924, 14 years old. I married, had a family. When I, I was 28, when I married, I had a family, and I haven't been back in the mill since. What's your name, ma'am? Leona Zimmerman Parham. This is we she, twins. Is born, she is born there. <laughs> I was 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Your name, ma'am? Mary. Mary? Mary. Oh, I don't have anything to say. I think my husband said it all. <laughs> Just tell him you're very simple. What's your name, ma'am? Just tell him your name, Mary. Tell him your name. Mary. Tell him your name. Oh, Mary Zimmerman. And I think my husband said it all. I haven't anything to say. <laughs> my name is Roger Parham. I'm the son of Leona Zimmerman Parham and Leander Zimmerman and Adam A. Zimmerman's nephew. Thank you, sir. Me. Okay, I'm Karen Till Medley Parham. I'm his wife, and my family is a long line of people because all my people on my mother's side worked in the mill and retired from there. Thank you, ma'am. Newton, but I married East Newton boy, Howard Duncan, and we met, was married for 45 years until his death in 86. I worked at East Newton Mill. I went to work when I was 18, and I worked there till I married and had children quit. So I lived in East Newton. I'm Ophelia Harcourt now. What's your name, ma'am? Ophelia Harcourt. Thank you. Uh, I'm the daughter of uh, Travis and Exa Duncan. I was raised at East Newton, and uh, my name is Ann Knight. Uh, this is Marvin Herbert. I went to work 1929 East Union Cotton Mill, three cents an hour. I stayed and left there in 43, $12, not an hour, but a week. <laughs> done everything that was to be done in the spinning room, twist room, and winding room, and spool room. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Clifton Willingham. I went to work in the East Union Mill. 19 and 29, and I worked in the twisting room. Well, we were raised so poor that we had to put or eat so much lard gravy. When I was a child, we had to put sand in the bed at night to keep from sliding out. <laughs> I, I'm Arthur Duncan. I went to work in the mill in 1923 with a fabulous salary of $5.18 cents for 60 hours. I worked 51 years, mostly in the card room. 
I went to my lowest job, pumped everything in the car room and done it in them for one year. I retired in 1974. Thank you, sir. I'm John Craston, Jr. I never worked in a cotton mill, but my grandfather, Monroe Wood, was superintendent of East Newland Cotton Mills. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't count. Oh, wait a minute. Here's Ed over here. Anytime. My name is Anna Neal. I went to work at East Newnan in 1936, and I worked until 1960. I've done several different jobs while I worked there. Then I went to work for Marathon, American Kid, and retired from there. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Luther Cowett. I went to work in the mill in 1936. About 15 years. Worked in the card room. Open the room, they call it opening cotton. Thank you, sir. My name is Marvin Couch. I went to work in East Union, <coughs> Mill, Dolphin Spinning. Thank you, sir. I'm Gordon Willingham. I went to work East Union, worked in the twister room and swept the floor, Dolph twisters, and whatever else they could get me to do. Thank you. Okay. I'm Ray Wiles. I'm oldest of four. My mother was a widow woman. And the first job that uh, I had was paper boy. And then I got old enough to go to work in the mill. And the money that we made supported us uh, for living. And I have my brother Fred here, my sister Virginia Knox, and my sister Margaret Burnett. I'm Fred Wiles. I went to work in uh, the card room in 1935 in East Newton Mill. We had a young engineer come out of Georgia Tech and went to work there, and he told my uncle John Walker that I sat down more than anybody he had ever seen on the job, but he had checked my job considerably, and he could find nothing wrong with it, so he never could get on the <laughs> And I'm the sister of uh, Fred and Rafe Wiles. And ma'am? I'm the wife of Fred Wiles. And that's Fred, right? No, this one. Okay. Gotcha. I'm Margaret Burnett. I never did work in the mill. I helped deliver papers. Okay. I'm J.T. Cofield. I went to work in the spinning room uh, in the mill when I went to work. And uh, I worked in a mill, my parents worked in a mill. I'm my... sorry if you just got that again because the chair's made a oh, noise. Oh, okay. I'm Nellie Meacham Cofield, and uh, I worked in a mill, my parents worked in a mill. Uh, I worked in the spinning room. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Abbas Malia. I went to work in the wine room, East New Mill. Thank you, ma'am. Would you introduce one more time yourself, sir? Doyle Goodrow. And what you do? I worked to, went to work in the mill at... When I was 14 and a half years old, East New York, and I worked in twist room and wine room, and other meals I worked in the spinning room. And... Great, thank you. Yeah, ma'am? Hazel Goodrow, how was the spinning? Missed you. Thank you. I'm Lola Williams, and I worked at East New York Mill as a wine dealer. Would you introduce yourself one more time? I want to find Lola Williams. What you do, ma'am? My name is Opal Mark Michael. I went to work in the mill when I was 15 years old. I worked for 23 years, and I ran winders when they didn't run me. <laughs> and I'm Ruth Michael. I worked in the mill, and I run Universal Winders. Almeida. I used to be a Hinesley, and I'm uh, married to Almeida Erickson. I married a, uh, I was a Hinesley before I married, and I went to work 40 years, and worked 40 years in the mill, and I started off at 10 cents an hour. Worked 11 hours a day. Anything more, I've got a couple of certificates uh, honoring uh, both an individual among you that really began this whole process and that we are in, all indebted to for uh, bringing us together. Uh, and then, of course, a general commendation to you as a group uh, for the wonderful things you, you have done over these 25 years in bringing back together a community 
that indeed we are convinced, and that's both myself and uh, the colleagues with which I'm working today, uh, we are convinced that what you're doing is vitally important, not only to the history of this community, and, and obvious, that's obvious, uh, you represent, but uh, if anything, you remember about that, and hopefully again, learn uh, more about uh, this community and what it's represented. So let me begin by calling up, if I could, uh, Etta Mae Zimmerman, uh, and I'd like to give her, if you, if you would please, Etta Mae, I know that this meeting today and for the last 25 years would not have occurred without your leadership and without the dedication that you've given to this. Uh, and we deeply appreciate that. I know I speak for everyone here when we express our appreciation to you and that we are thrilled by the fact that we can be a little part of this. So I'd like to, on behalf of Georgia well, State University, please, please. Now, I was Nancy Bonk, only one involved. I give credit to the ones that helped me do this. I did mention it, and I told people for about three or four years we were going to start an East Newman reunion because the only time we saw each other was when some of them died. Well, Harry Barton told me, he said, I'm tired of you now. I wish you'd go ahead and do it. <laughs> We're talking about it. <laughs> So I invited the first tenor, but I first talked to Rosalie Cranston. I said, Rosalie, what do you think about having the East Newman reunion? She said, goodness knows, it may I left there when I was 16 years old, didn't go back for five years, and I doubt whether they even know any of the names or not. I had two theme, I mean two sheets of paper, I said, let me read you the ones that just live in Hogansburg, Georgia, that used to live in East Newman. She said, okay. She said, yeah, I remember them. I remember her or him. I said, now I'm going to tell you where I know this many live. And I read them all. She remembered most of them. But, um, she said, how are you going to get in touch with them? I said, I'll call one of a family, tell them to invite their whole family. And then, after I had called 10 or 12, Lucille, she was Lucille Gasway, but she was a Reynolds when I knew her. She joined in, and we'd come to Newman to her house to make the telephone calls to keep it from being long distance. And we'd call <laughs> four each for several nights. But they got to where they didn't want me to get up there because I carried on the conversation with them. <laughs> they said, we're just here to invite people, we're not here to talk. So but I called one man, he said, who did you say you were? I said, Ed made something. He said, hmm. I hadn't heard of the Zermans in a hundred years. <laughs> but I want to know where your brothers are. He wanted me to stop and tell. That's why I was talking. They asked me the question. <laughs> it wasn't your fault, was it? <laughs> well, basically, let me read, if I could, Adam A, to you, uh, that Georgia State University commends Etta Mae Zimmerman, the founder of the Old Acquaintance Reunion, for her efforts to preserve the history of this community and is hereby named a friend of Georgia State University in appreciation of her support for this work. Again, our congratulations, Etta Mae. And if I could ask T.G. to come back up, I don't know, did he, did he disappear? And I know he's told me many times, and I believe him, that he doesn't take responsibility for this reunion. So I won't, uh, I won't uh, uh, lay that uh, on behalf of the reunion as a whole and tell him how very much it, uh, an honor it is to be associated with this group of people. Well, Les, I, uh, 
this is worded as Edelmay's helper, I'm sure, isn't it? Well, something you I have accept, to say. I accept it in that order. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. As I say, it's a it's a great. Uh, yeah, what, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? Then, for the benefit of some of us that haven't spent. Looks like wine. wine. What's that? Card room. That's a card room. That's just a bone with cotton stuck up. Drawing. <laughs> it goes from that to the That's drawing, man. <laughs> yeah, thread. That's the front of the car. That, That's where it comes out. When Bill, did you tell them about yeah. that, can't you? That's the drawing, That's the drawing <laughs> Yeah. That's drawing room. What's your cleaning off there? Machine. Drawing frame. That might be Slovis. Yeah, I true. think that's Slovis. For the benefit of some of these younger people, if you want to tell us what it might have sounded like in there or <laughs> what oh, it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, so much fuss. Right. You didn't hear them with fuss. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Spinning. 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 Spinning
wax it, run it through wax, and then that, you know, what you call slash. They're doing things I ain't never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing really here? got good that's English. That's what the flasher room looked like, where they put the uh, warps on a, on a, one of them uh, fennel. They're drawing in ends now. Yeah, they're drawing in on the wall. Can you sit down anywhere? Oh, no! You ate your lunch standing up. Say that a little louder if I don't want to hear. I said you ate your lunch standing up when they didn't go home. They they give us 30 minutes at one time, but if you, they finally got where you just work through. Stand up between three and us. When we went to work at six and worked till six, we got 30 minutes. No, we didn't. We got an hour for them. <coughs> we used to get 45 minutes. We stopped off at 12, went back 4 to 1. Yeah. <laughs> we did too. In the olden days, they didn't have a week shop. All right, we want you to see, we've been around talking with a lot of you about life in the mill. We just want to see a little bit of one of our star witnesses. I think they call it working on hair. And so our houses were always fairly decent in this country. And uh, they were livable, and we didn't know but what they were making because living out in the country, you didn't see it. Everything you seen was just about just the life, you know. But when we moved to the mill village, we had electric lights and running water, and I thought that was heaven on earth. That was the happiest I ever was when I didn't have to go get, draw a bucket of water out of the well. And we could just turn on that faucet, and I just thought we were rich. I just knew we were rich. It took me a long time to think of that we weren't as happy as well off as I thought we were. But it was fun, and we had the little lights that just come down from the ceiling, and we had those until after President Roosevelt came out, and then they changed things again, you know. And we had more modernization, and they put the, uh, they painted the houses real nice. And my husband and me would always keep ours there inside. We lived on Mill Village. We always kept ours just like it belonged to us. We could always keep the walls painted and uh, keep the yard up because I don't like to live where the yard is not nice and the house is not clean. And so uh, I couldn't tell too much difference. I don't guess, I guess if I had to say, but I remember one time when we lived in the country, we didn't have any screen doors. And we'd be picking cotton and we'd come home for dinner every day. And my mother would always have, you know, when you raise in the country, you have the best food in the world. You have all kinds of vegetables and meats, and I, I never will forget. It was the uh, oil they were the most fly that year. We didn't have any screen. But you know what I did when I ate my lunch? I crawled up under the bed where it was good and dark, where the flies <laughs> could get me. <laughs> 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 We used to get a hickory limb and a pixie limb and wave it across the table. Well, I, I, I can remember that uh, it was kind of secretive at first. And then we'd have an uh, hour for lunch and then come back and uh, work till 6 o'clock that night. That's how, we, that's how we worked to start with. With all these young girls around, did you have a good time? Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. Had good time. Yeah. Oh, sure. We, we'd have a good time at work even. You know, we enjoyed working because they were not too strict on us. We could. But later on, uh, you couldn't do that, I gather. No. No, we couldn't dare leave the plant then. Well, they finally put drink boxes in the plant and then... But we run a lot they put a toilet paper in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to tell you a story about that. You know, not waste the toilet paper. You had to be saving with it. They told us if we wasted it, and they told us wasting the paper, they were going to lay us off. So 
I thought it'd be smart for us to get a car. <laughs> you know, and he chair, we chair the corn off and um, put it, you know, be a car laying around. <laughs> when in fact we use that at home sometimes. <laughs> So we carried it down there and I stood in nature, used, hung it up with a string, rolled it up. right behind the commode, said, use this cob and save your job. <laughs> <laughs> and the boss said, if you ever, if you ever find out who did that, he was going to file. <laughs> and I was scared to death. They didn't find it out. He, if they had to move on account of me putting a car back there, that'd be awful. <laughs> my daddy was sick a long bit and he wasn't able to work, so they let me work, but they'd lay off all the married women and everything at that time, and, but they didn't lay me off because uh, my daddy wasn't able to work and I had to work. And, and then I had to hire somebody to stay with him and I paid him, I made $10 a week and I paid him $3 a week to stay with him and give him his dinner, so you know what, how hard it was then. <laughs> from Hoganville up to East Newland, which is about 18 or 20 miles, and brought us food. And then in no October of 1932, we moved to Hoganville, and there was my brother and his wife and two children, my mother and father, sister and myself, which was eight, lived in a three-room house. We had to get on the trunk to get in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but we lived. We were happy. We didn't, have, we didn't know nothing but being happy. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you would mention Hogansville. I got know there are some others. I'm going to come back to Hogansville in just a minute. We've got some, someone that was, was thinking and writing about those very things that you're talking about uh, in Hogansville. But someone had their hand up. I was very fortunate because I was a pretty fair baseball player, and when the meals were going to start time, I could pick the meal that I wanted to go to to play baseball with. But everybody didn't have that good fortune. So you were a good, what'd you play? What it's position? I played, played second base back then. So an infielder. Anybody else play in the industrial leagues, the, uh, the textile league? Mike Michael. Husband, my husband was playing 